was actually part of one million Dr. Hodges' house. How much of this week is the museum? Uh, actually, well, uh, within the collection, it's not necessarily the museum of this machine. It's actually that as, 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 as oh, this is the case. Now, unfortunately, painting of these machines did not stop after the Victrola era. People have been painting them ever since with house paint hmm. and car paint and everything else. Okay. See the work they're doing there with the, with the chisels? Yeah. And you wonder where some of those tools wound up of who even handled them. I'll bet they receipt. were taken home by the craftsmen who used them and probably held in the families and then disposed of over time as they were out or people stopped using them. Unfortunately, people don't use tools that much anymore. A lot of these skills have been lost. You know, the cabinet makers, even today, they don't do a lot of carving. It's mostly yeah. moldings and stuff like that. CNC machines or... Yeah, everything done by the computer. It's all just... All the old-fashioned skills are gone. Yeah. Like the uh, yellow signs. Which ones? The yellow. Oh, be sure it's a Victrola, the instrument approved by the world's greatest artist, yes. So when would that sign have been hanging up the teens? Probably. Home entertainer, $15 to $300. Yeah. Chicago, and then Chicago, and then Chicago, and then Yeah. Indiana. Scientific American, May 16th, 1896. I have one from 1888 or 1889 that actually shows operation at the mine. Hmm. You see, this is the kind of thing I always look for on eBay. You never know if something like this would show up. You check that once a week? I check it daily. <laughs> once a week. You check once a week, you lose things. And I have seen things like the Nickelodeons. Occasionally, you'll see one pop up. Sometimes basket case, sometimes in good condition. But these ones be extremely, enormously rare to find out there. Just once in a lifetime opportunity. 
It's five bucks. I don't know what it is. Take it home. Okay. On eBay? No, you'd be bidding no, against the whole the world. Bidding. Oh, at the flea market? Yeah. It's like a stethoscope or something. Yeah, the, well, it's a hearing tube. It's basically your early headphones, you know, so you wouldn't disturb anybody else. You plugged it in, you can, you can listen to it. So you have a separate uh, top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right on top of it. And so you put the wax cylinder over that and... Uh, yep. Yep, put the wax cylinder on top of that. Uh, Plug the thing onto the top. Unless you're going to talk, depending on how you set it up. How you set it up the horn on the now, is this an Edison machine? American no, gramophone. The, this American gramophone was in Austria, Colombia. Yeah. Uh, Edison did have his own version of a dictaphone. He called it the Elephone. Mm -hmm. Not that he had any kind of ego, but <laughs> he called it the Elephone. I only read that about six months ago. <laughs> I was reading something. Yeah. Else. Eldridge, Eldridge Johnson avoided the cylinder phonograph as much as possible. Yeah, uh, by that time, that. really, Edison was the only one still, for the most part, using cylinders. Yeah. Only major company using cylinders. Yeah, Columbia kept it up for a while in Pathé in France for a bit, but yeah. it was Edison that held out to the bitter end. Yeah, Edison had a thing about. I think he was basically the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. I'm sure 99% of the time he was. In the end, he caved and went to the disc phonograph. Mm -hmm. First the diamond disc and then just the regular. Not until the team. Yeah. He held out as long as possible. You see these wax cylinders all over. Mm -hmm. I got some at home. These are probably not wax. These are probably uh, celluloid. Yeah. I hope that one's celluloid. I'm pretty sure anything that's in those cases is probably celluloid. We have a couple of other silly little ones downstairs. It's like Ten painting four. on the wall there. Which one? Coming upstairs. Oh, it's nice this was. Yeah. Well, I, when you saw that sign, you knew what it meant. When was Nipper around? 1898, turn of the century? Uh, uh, he died, I want to say 1895. He's like 18. Yeah, he's an right? I think so. They said he'd run up and down the street and bark and nip at your ankles. That's how we got the name. <laughs> Somebody get a photograph of him looking at the, uh, the loudspeaker, or is that just the horn, not a loudspeaker? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the original painting was uh, that's was Durell. The when the story goes, Francis Durell one day was uh, trying to determine what to paint, listening to some music on the dice and all that. I looked up the movie and Nicker was listening as well, but Nicker seemed to get the follow. So Durell decided that one needs to be painted. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. You got the curious look looking into the into the sound of the music there. I think so. Hmm. That's some piece of work to all of them. Just looking how they did that reproducer on there. You always had to keep coming up with something new. 
because the industry was moving fast at that time. If you didn't keep up, you got left behind. Amazing collection. Nineteen. So doctor, how long did he collect all this stuff? Uh, he started at about age fifteen, and as far as I know, he collected right up till close to the end of his life at ninety-five. Mm. Doc's not here, he's out uh, tank sailing. <laughs> Just like us. <laughs> no, I'll never have a collection quite like this, but... I don't know how far he would go to travel to get these things. No. That I don't know. When he was doing it, a lot of times people would be happy to get rid of them because they were taking space in the shed or the garage or the attic. Yeah, feelers out, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah it's true. And nobody, nobody was using them. And... But, you know, they also didn't have a way to connect. Like, yeah, it's not, not yeah. like today where you... Today, you know, you punch on the computer, maybe you can find something. Put the wanted list looking for it. Yeah. It's like kids buying Model T Fords for $50 and $25 in the 1950s, the same thing. Yeah. Today, you're paying fifteen, twenty thousand 20000 for some of them. And yeah. Same thing goes for the machines. And I've seen an uptick in interest in them lately. There's definitely more competition now for the nicer models than there was when I started collecting them. Oh, wow, it's got to be pushing 30 years now. And now when I finish a Victor Victrola 50 Portable, I put it on eBay. Usually, there's usually quite a bit of interest in it. Hmm. And I'm just, unfortunately, I don't have too much room for the larger machines, but... Those ones I usually keep myself. It's just too much of a pain to ship them, you know? And they sound better. They sound. They have lectures here? Yeah, we do, uh, we do different types of programs. Uh, sometimes we lecture, sometimes uh, more of a. Sometimes we bring outside goods to do different programs. Oh. Most of the programs are created by our staff. Usually you have some relation to Victor, otherwise we, we don't have a place for them to be on the museum. So we usually start with some relationship to Victor and then sometimes expand from there. Yeah. Oh, I wish I lived around the corner from this place. <laughs> I'd be here every day admiring these things. But it's a four and a half hour drive for us. Wow. Where do you guys live? Uh, we're in New York, Brewster, New York. We'll buy away planes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Some guys are probably up. Did you see Norway down here just with us? Yep. Yep. Can you see the storefront? See what's for sale. <laughs> that, that store closed a long time ago. Yeah, we won't be selling any of those. Are these repops or originals? Originals. Oh man. Yeah, but they're original. Yeah. These things pop up somewhere and you don't even know what the heck you're looking at. Well, if you're a collector, you know. Well, most people nowadays, unless you're a third age, you've never heard of the world. That would be a good thing. Yeah, um, 
How vast is the record collection? Uh, 55,000, that's we all together, roughly. Uh, not all of them here, obviously. 55,000. Um, it's in the same storage facility, you know, except for the largest collection. Could they not a building twice the size? <laughs> uh, actually, there are several buildings. Uh, not, but not all of them housing just this building's collection. Uh, we actually have a total of uh, five museums that are run by the state though. This is one of them. The old state house cut the blocks from here, the John Dickinson Plantation, mm -hmm. just south of town, and then the Newcastle Courthouse in Northern Delaware and in uh, Southern Delaware, and that was one of the old museums. So the collections for all five of them, the stuff is not within the museums. The collections are all there as well as a lot of other stuff. So, you know, if you guys, uh, you know, the next time you guys think about coming down, if you try to uh, use a call ahead of time for the weekday, maybe uh, we could get one of the carriers to take you through some of the, the Victor collection stuff. I can't guarantee that, but it's a possibility because it's technically open to the public, but you kind of hmm. have to schedule it in advance. Yeah, about once a year I have time off. We go different places. I figure yeah. I come back. Fifty-five thousand records. Yeah, that would take me about a year, I think. So Fifty-five thousand needles. Where is he buried? Elgood Johnson? New Jersey, I believe. I want to say Morristown, because I'm sorry, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I know he's not there around here. I can tell you that for sure. But he, he lived in Morristown, New Jersey. Huh. Um, so my, my best guess is that's where he was from there. I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd like to have find the information, but... What's the uh, blank one? What's that? Which one is that? Oh, that is the reverse side of a one-sided record. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes we show off, you know, oh. record, you know some records were just one-sided. Hmm. That's the easiest time to have one of these buttons go back on there. Yeah, that was usually the premium performers got that treatment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Caruso and Oh, yeah. They would be one. Usually, you would need the red, the red seal. Yep. One side. Somebody tried to give me one of these a couple weeks ago. Don't bring it down. Never shut up on it. <laughs> There's the 4 3. And the 255. Automatic Electrola Radiola. A giant piece of furniture. Well, so look, there's a radio in there, there's a phonograph in there, there's motors in there. Oh, yeah. Radio on this side. 
Can you yeah. find this in the big living room or? Of a very uh, large and yeah, expensive you, home. You were the coach, your name was Carnegie Rockefeller or yeah. one of those, yeah. My, but the only nigga you about- You finding this in the average house, I know that. No, yeah. you don't, they only made about 2,100 of these. Yeah. So- Out of 2,100, how many are accounted for? We have two. I don't know how many of the others are accounted for. But we have two, we have this one and then we have one in our collections. So. Dinner, dessert, coffee, then drinks. Everybody in the living room and all.